Hi, everybody. Welcome back to our Residence Life Speaker Series. My name is Justin Brown. I'm here with my co-host. Leah Paulson. And this program is being brought to you by the Office of Residence Life and Housing Services. Today, we are here with the talented, recognizable, accomplished, oh, he's an icon. We are here with Al Roker. Al, how are you doing today? Doing good. How are you? I'm doing really well. Obviously, Al doesn't need any type of introduction, but we would not be doing him justice if we did it. Um, I saw your entire bio, Al. Man, we would be here for years. You've done so many <laughs> things. You've accomplished so many, have gotten so many awards. I'm, I, I minimized it so I could get, it, get you in. Um, but Al Roker is a weather and feature anchor on NBC News Today, as well as a co-host of the third hour of today. Roker has been named the best weatherman twice by New York Magazine. He's the recipient of the American uh, Metrological, Meteorological Society's prestigious seal of approval and has been a pioneer in the use of computer graphics for weather casting. You've won three daytime Emmy Awards and you're a part of today's recognition as America's and best morning newscast. Everybody give it up for Al. All right, so Al, welcome to uh, our group of Westchester University. I know our students are really excited. If you're a student and you're tuning in, please start placing your questions in the chat. So Al, how have you been during this whole COVID-19? Well, you know, uh, we're very, uh, we're very uh, blessed. We have a house in upstate New York and, you know, being in that uh, 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 demographic of uh, being at risk, being over 60, I decided uh, uh, we'd move back up here and, uh, you know, my son, who's a sophomore in high school, you know, is doing online classes. Uh, my wife, Deborah Roberts, is uh, uh, doing stuff from here on Good Morning America and 2020 and Nightline. Uh, so, we're, you know, it, it's all good. Today's a, a, a nice sunny day. So uh, even that makes life a little bit better. But, uh, you know, we've been able, thanks to technology, uh, we've been able to, you know, do our weather. I've got a setup where I've got uh, two iPads, one that has my video return, one that has a teleprompter. I'm using my iPhone 11 as my camera. Uh, uh, I've got uh, two MacBooks, one that drives the monitor behind me and another that controls the weather graphics. And then for my IFB, the thing that I can hear program and control and can talk to me, I've got an iPhone 8. So uh, it is a bit of an Apple uh, centric uh, uh, operation, but you know we, you know, and five years ago, I don't know that you could have done this, uh, but uh, uh, we are in a bit of a rural area. Fortunately, about two months ago, we got high speed internet. I was on DSL for the last. We've been up here about twenty three years, and uh, if this was four months ago, we could have never done this. Oh, wow, 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 wow. Well, I'm glad that you're able to move everything over because we would definitely miss you if we couldn't see you every single day. Um, do you have any funny quarantine stories? And by funny quarantine stories, I mean like, for example, my daughter yeah. has no idea what a commercial is. Um, this quarantine has definitely showed her what a commercial is on TV. Um, her iPad went out the other day and I was like, sorry, baby, you're gonna have to charge it. You know, we're gonna turn on the TV. And she's like, dad, put on the next one, put on the next one. I'm like, well, baby, you gotta wait. And she's like, what do you, what do you mean? I gotta wait. So. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's um, for like, for example, we've had, you know, I'm in our family room. This is where I broadcast. Uh, my wife, Deborah's in the, uh, in the uh, living room right around the corner. And yesterday she was doing something and, and Nick was part of it. And I thought I would surreptitiously videotape it. And Robin Roberts kind of, I guess I, I forgot about the angle, but they could see me. And Robin Roberts kind of busted me and says, I, is that Al Roker in the background? You know, so, um, and, and today Deborah thought we were off because I, on our TV, we've got, we, we use YouTube TV for our quote cable. And, uh, it, but it's about a 30 second delay between live and when it actually comes on YouTube TV. So she thought I wasn't on and she somehow inadvertently walked in three different times. Oh my. During the same segment. And she kept, and I said, you're on. And she, but I'm not, like, yeah, you are. You know, so she kept looking at the big TV thinking that was live, which it is, but it's 30 seconds delayed. 
Oh, that's so funny. That's so funny. Well, some people have already started asking their questions. So, uh, Leah, you can go ahead and start calling on some people. Oh, we're also live on Facebook. So for those who are watching the stream from Facebook, if you have questions, feel free to put those in the chat and we'll bring those into Al as well. Awesome. So our first question is from Nick Marcel. So go ahead, Nick. Awesome. Hi, Al. Thank you very much for being here. Um, first, I'll say what's happening in your neck of the woods. But um, yes, other than that, <laughs> um, I was seeing that you uh, used to do some uh, cartoons and illustrations um, and was wondering if you still do any of that nowadays. A good friend of mine, his dad is uh, in that industry or in that world. No, you know, I do some doodling, you know, and I have a little cartoon son that I draw on my uh, uh, signature, but no, not as much anymore. I just don't have the time, sadly. That's fair. <laughs> Well, thanks. We love you. We love oh, you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I'm the mom. All right, mom. That's awesome. The cool thing about this, Al, is that we've been doing programming for the university, but it hasn't just been for students. So we have uncles, aunts, moms, dads, a lot of people are tuning in. But for those individuals who want to, you know, start following you on social media, uh, what are some of your social media handles so they can start following you? Uh, it's pretty simple. It's um, uh, Al. Uh, you know, at Al Roker, you know, both in Twitter and uh, uh, Instagram. Uh, I don't do Snapchat or uh, TikTok. And, uh, any, any plans <laughs> on starting a TikTok? No, it's no, 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 it's no, not so much. It's, All right. It's, it's, oh, I, 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 I applaud those. I applaud those who do. But, you know, there's there's too much stuff, you know, between TikTok and the uh, the thing and the Snapchat and the Slack and this and that. It's like, you know, how about just living? Just mm -hmm. move. Absolutely. Just call, pick up a phone. Yeah. Know. But I'm I'm <laughs> I'm impressed with all the people who can do the dance moves and blah blah blah. That's <laughs> Good for you. Absolutely. Our next question is from Anum. I hope I'm saying your name correctly, but go ahead and ask your question. Hi. Um, so yeah, so we have one questions kind of funny but um we feel like like Al, one thing that you're kind of known for is your glasses and actually my mom requested this question because she's been watching you forever and we've also been watching you for um as long as we've been alive so um how many pairs of glasses do you own if you've ever kept track yeah i've got uh probably about a dozen you yeah. know um uh, you know, I mean, some people wear, you know, different shoes, sneakers, whatever. Um, I like, I like glasses. Um, I've got pink, I've got yellow, purple, blue, uh, red. Uh, my wife's not crazy about some of the brighter colors, but. <laughs> I think it's with your look though. It's cool. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> It makes a statement. I love it. Do you have a glasses <laughs> person, or is that are you the person that goes and gets your own glass, or do you have a well, glasses I've, guy? Uh, there's or a, a number of the brighter colors are provided, and I'll, I mean, I pay for them. But uh, a guy named um, um, Ashley Bezamot, and he's got an eyeglass company called Dom Vetro. It's based in LA. Uh, they're custom glasses, but they're you know for custom glasses, they're relatively uh, inexpensive. I mean, they're a little bit more than Warby Parker, but uh, not a lot more. And um, uh, I just like the like the shapes and I like the colors. Very cool, very cool. Now, a lot of times um, on the show, they've sometimes dressed you up like to fit the theme. Like I remember you dressing up like Doc from Back to the Future, and that was a really cool segment. Was, were there any segments that were very similar to that? That was like well, it's that's favorite? that's part of that was part of our Halloween. You know, every, you know, every Halloween we, you know, we do something and Dylan Dreyer and I teamed up uh, to do uh, Back to the Future. She was Marty McFly and uh, I was Doc Brown. So uh, if you if you go, if you Google it, I, although I must say it was pretty, we did a pretty good job. That's awesome. Yay. All right. So our next question is from Natalie McDonough Fisher. Go ahead and ask your question. Natalie is feeling a little shy, so mom is asking the question. <laughs> was okay. it tough to break into the media as a person of color? Um, well, 
you know, I guess it was. I'm, you know, I started in a long, long time ago. I was a sophomore in college. It was 1974, and I got a, a weekend weather job in Syracuse. My uh, department chairman put me up for it. And in Syracuse at the time, there were no black anchors, uh, you know, sitting at the desk. Um, but the general manager and the news director decided, you know, why not? And uh, because A, I think I would look a little different. I, and B, I was pretty cheap because I was a college student. I was making $15 a newscast. So, uh, but, you know, I, I, I'm sure there are jobs that I didn't get that I didn't even know about as I, you know, started moving up. Uh, but, you know, I always believed my dad said that as a, uh, a black kid, I, I had to work twice as hard and be twice as good to get half as far. So I have always uh, kind of used that as my metric. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. I love that we got like tons of families out here. Next is Tasia. I think she's got some family that wants to say hello. Go ahead, oh, Tasia. Okay. Tasia's got everybody in there. I hope y'all social distancing <laughs> over there. <laughs> my grandma wants to say hi. Hi. Hi there. <laughs> so Tasia, what's I your question? He wanted to ask about how you're doing and then how his wife and him are doing it during quarantine. Uh, well, we're doing fine. You know, it's, um, you know, we got a backyard, we got a front yard and, um, <laughs> you know, and so we've got, you know, we've got space and, um, you know, it, it, it hasn't been bad. I, I think it's been a little tougher on my wife because, you know, not having a regular daily mm. gig as opposed to doing news, you know, magazine stories and stuff for Nightline. And uh, it's, a, it's a little different for me. I'm on every day. I know when I'm going to be on. So uh, I think it's been a little more difficult for her. But, you know, we're having a good time. Okay. I like your glasses. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, so thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Tasia. So, Al, you've done a lot of voice work as well. I think that you were uh, one of the voice actors in the movie Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. You were I also, was. You're also in a movie called Robot. So talk how that goes, where you're kind of moving beyond the screen, but now you're just being a voice of a character. Well, I'm a, anybody who knows me knows I'm a huge fan of animation and uh, love uh, voice work. And so, you know, that's been a lot of fun to be able to, you know, you're in a booth. A lot of times for these animated films, you know, the actors, the voice actors work by themselves. They don't come together as a cast. Uh, and a lot of the work is done in LA or at least the director, art director, people like that. So you're in a booth and in your headphones, they've patched in the director from Los Angeles. And, you know, you'll do the script and it's okay, we'll try it this way, try it that way. And, you know, Pat Patrickson probably had I don't know, six or eight lines, maybe. And, uh, you know, it was, a, it took about an hour, hour and a half, um, you know, so, but it was, it's fun, you know, the, you know, to see how they imagine the voice and how they, you know, create the characters that that's created. Willie Geist and I were dim and some, uh, we were pandas and Kung Fu Panda three, um, you know, so it's, it's been, it's been a blast. That's so cool. Awesome. Um, so Sam Tellez is a huge fan. So Sam, go ahead. Hi, Al. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Hello. You are literally my idol. Like, I'm not even kidding. I, I'm, I'm so excited. Hi, I'm good. Um, so I've always wanted to ask you this. How is it going in your neck of the woods? Well, it, it's going pretty well because uh, we do have woods outside. <laughs> so um, we've got a lot of woodland creatures. Uh, it's been very, it's been a mild winter. So we're overrun with squirrels and chipmunks. <laughs> Good. I hope you're doing well. Thank you. I am. <laughs> you as well. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Sam. All right. Our next question we have is from Catherine. So Catherine, go ahead and ask your question. Hi, um, I'm here with my brother. He's like your biggest fan, and then my whole family's in the back. But um, our question is, what's your favorite part about being on the show? Um, well, sadly, my I think my favorite part is the part that we don't have right now, which is being able to 
hang out with, you know, Hoda and, and Savannah and Carson, and Craig, Dylan and Chanel, you know, we, I mean, it's, it really is a good group of folks. And I do love going out on the plaza, you know, and shaking hands and doing all that and can't do that right now. So, you know, it's, um, yeah, it's two of the things I love are, are, I'm not able to do, but you know, what are you going to do? A lot of people uh, aren't able to do the things they love or work at the jobs they have uh, and aren't getting paid. And I'm very fortunate. I've got some place to live. I'm doing my job and I'm getting paid. So, you know, um, I'm, I'm okay. Yeah, thank you. My parents also wanted me to tell you that they're Oswego class of 86. All right. Yeah, they're very so excited well. about it. <laughs> well, I'm glad they, they I'm glad they are. <laughs> I'm digging your brother's hat too, Catherine. <laughs> yes, <laughs> he loves it. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Next we have Monet. So go ahead and ask your question. Hi, Al. So um, last semester, I took a class in meteorology, which was really fascinating, and I learned a lot. What has been your most interesting or unique experience or discovery with the weather or in meteorology, like throughout your whole life? Mm, well, I just think, you know, that, that until you go out and report on it and kind of see it, you know, you don't really appreciate the power of weather, you know, and and uh, you know what what nature does, and how water finds a way, and um, you know the destructive power of a tornado. Uh, all those things, you know, we think we are, you know we've got all this stuff pretty well mastered, and then you know an area gets hit by a tornado or a hurricane, and you know you're just in awe of what is left behind. And so uh, I, I think I've never I never. And, see, and, and I never cease to be amazed by the power of, uh, of the weather. Thank you, Monet. All right, um, we have Emma next. Emma and her dad also has a question. So go ahead, Emma. Hey there. Hi. Uh, my question is, what is your favorite memory from a Thanksgiving Day parade? Oh, golly. Uh, I think it was the first one, you know, um, uh, standing there and getting ready to do uh, the weather and do the hosting and realize that, you know, to be part of uh, people's tradition, you know, that's something I grew up watching and to be part of that is, uh, it's, it's kind of awe inspiring, still is. Hi Al, watched you for years, how you doing? Good, good. Very good, so I have a kind of a, a bigger, broader question, but uh, as kids graduate, um, transition into the workforce, uh, digging back into your history, what would be your insight or a little tidbit to uh, tell these kids to stand out in, in, in a world where they have to be doing interviewing remotely and virtually? Well, um, hmm. I, I, I would say to, to be yourself. Don't try to... Um, be somebody you're not, you know, don't, you know, try to impress somebody with uh, a, a, a big vocabulary or, um, you know, to, to be, represent your best self. And, 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 you know, that, because if you're not authentic, they'll know it. Um, so, you know, you can only, you, you've got to wear your You've got to wear your skin that you're in. So, um, and just uh, try as best you can to impart the, the thought that if they, if you are hired, that you are going to be one of the greatest assets they've ever hired. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. you sure. Absolutely. We have time for one more question. So we have one more question. Um, Leah, who was it? Two more, actually. Do we have time for both real quick? Let's ask Al. Al, you got time for two more? Okay. Okay. Cool. So Colin first, and then Rowan has a quick one. So Colin, go ahead first. Okay. Hi, Al. So my question is, back a couple of years ago, you broke the world record for hosting the longest uninterrupted live weather report by reporting for 34 hours straight. What was that experience like, and what influenced you to do it? Um, you know, one of my producers came up and, and said, um, 
oh, did you see the story out of, I think it was Sweden. There was this weather person, this woman, who did a live weather forecast for 24 hours. And I said, that's I, I could do that. And they said, really? I said, yeah, but you'd have to do it. You have to do at least 30 hours just so that nobody could come close. Or at least if they did, they'd have to really work at it. And that's how it kind of came up. Uh, as it turns out, she didn't do it for 24. In fact, it wasn't verified. Uh, but we went all in and it was it was a hoot. We had a great time. And then we did. We set the Guinness record for uh, uh, 50 live uh, live weather forecasts in all 50 states consecutively. Uh, so we did that. And then the last one, which was a couple of years ago, we broke world records on five college campuses uh, ending at SUNY Oswego, my alma mater, doing the longest conga line on ice. So. Interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah, thank you, much appreciate it. You bet. Our last question is from Rowan. Rowan, go ahead and ask your question. Hi, Mr. Roker. Thank you for doing this. Um, my sure. question was, um, when did you realize you wanted to be a meteorologist? Well, uh, truth be told, Ron, I didn't, I didn't want to be on TV. Uh, I was going to be a producer or a writer or a director. I didn't want to be on television. And uh, when I was in college, when I started in, in, in school, I took a couple of classes, one in, in the environment. Back then, they called it the ecology. And then I took a, a intro to meteorology class. Um, and, and like I said, at the end of my sophomore year, I was, I was majoring in radio and television. And in fact, my department chairman, uh, after I took a TV performance class, told me that I had the perfect face for radio. Um, so I, I wasn't planning on being on TV, but he put me up for a weekend weather job. Uh, at the end of my sophomore year, I got it, and that kind of started. But you know, my class uh, that year, when I took the performance class, there was another guy that nobody ever heard of afterwards, a guy named Jerry Seinfeld. Um, so I don't know if I don't know what happened to him. He ever made it? I don't know. I, I keep googling him. I can't find him. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. We are here with Al Roker, everybody. He spent some time with us talking about his career, things he's been doing and talking with all of you. Al, thank you so much for coming on with us today. Um, what we've been doing is we've allowed our speakers to have the last word or the last say. So if you have like a key to life or words to live by, I mean, you've been dropping gems on our students um, throughout the entire broadcast. But if there was one thing that you wanted to definitely leave with your message today, what would that be? Uh, I would say kind of going back to... Um, Emma's question, or Emma's dad's question, uh, uh, to be yourself. You know, that's, uh, Willard Scott is my mentor. Uh, he did the Today Show uh, for 20 years before me. Um, and, and he said, always be yourself. That's the, they can't take that from you. So that, um, and that's who you are. You know you best. So I would say that is, uh, that's, that's my advice. My other uh, piece of advice is, on, on July 28th, go out and buy, uh, you look so much better in person. Uh, uh, Tales of Absurdity and Success by Al Roker. It's, Absolutely. Uh, it's, a, it's the things I've learned working low these past 40 years. Uh, and the title comes from every time I go out at the window, every day, it never fails. Somebody will say, oh my gosh, you look so much better in person. And, and, and I know they mean it as a compliment, but I keep kind of, I, and you don't want to be rude, but the, it's like, you realize I make my living on TV. Mm -hmm. So that's not really a compliment, but no, thank you. No, for not at all. You've been <laughs> like, you know what you do too. You do too. <laughs> 
Thank you, Al, for being with us today. For all those who are just tuning in, we had Al Roker this afternoon. If all of you are interested, we have two more speakers today. Today, we have Joshua Triplett. He's from CBS's The Neighbors with Cedric the Entertainer. We have huh. MTV Sway at 4.30. And Al Roker, you could join us for any of these. So if there are well, any- Well, uh, if, if I can't, um, uh, actually, wait, Thursday, that's, that's today. That is today. <laughs> actually, I, I unfortunately, Today also happens to be my oldest daughter's birthday. Oh, happy we, birthday. We, thank you. And we have a Zoom. But if you want to get Sway, ask him how many times Eminem has actually been at the Eminem channel. Every time I go on his show, I buzz it. It's the Eminem. This guy's Eminem's never set foot in this building. <laughs> He's never here. Why is it even called the Eminem channel? I mean, you may as well call it. I, I bet the, the candy Eminem's have been in there more than Eminem has, <laughs> you know, like the peanut and the almond, you know, on Eminem, they've been right. there more than Eminem himself. So right. ask him that, he'll know, it's, I, I bust him every time. I will, I will definitely ask that. Uh, but we have Joshua Triplett at three, Sway at 4.30, we will ask him that question. And then tomorrow we're wrapping up our series with Cedric Yarbrough. He's uh, been on Reno 911, The Boondocks. He's also Officer Meow Meow on uh, BoJack Horseman. So we look forward to seeing you all there. Thank you again, Al. Okie dokie. Thank you so much.